Welcome to Christ United Methodist Church in Brooklyn, New York. Come and fellowship with us. We have an excellent message and hope you will enjoy it. This is the eighth Sunday in, of Pentecost. And I want to welcome you to the presence of God for this day. And I'm praying that the Lord will bless you immensely. The theme is choice making in marriage and God's guidance. So we are being led to this by the theme that we have for today. So join me in prayer. Our blessed and mighty Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us together. We thank you for your mighty power. We thank you for your grace that abounds. We praise you for all your children as they are coming into the Zoom. We bless you because, Lord, we know that you are going to bless everyone. We know that you are going to point us to the right path and you are going to make us to succeed in life so that we will not lose our life here on earth. But we will continue with you into eternity when the time comes to gather your people at the end of the age. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will fill us with your power, fill us with your presence. Amen. Bless us, heal Amen. us, deliver us, Amen. equip us and help us to continue Amen. to succeed in all that we lay our hands upon. Amen. Thank you for being here, Lord. Thank you for your children in their different places that, Lord, you are with them. Because the Spirit of God knows no distance. You are everywhere and you are blessing everyone who calls on you. So today, bless us. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are going to begin to sing unto the Lord as we sing hymn number 733, Marching to Zion.
The first lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 29, verses 15 to 28. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me what should your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were delicate, but Rachel was beautiful of form and appearance. Now Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And it seemed only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go into her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Now it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. And Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah as a maid. So it came to pass in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? And Laban said, It must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill our we, and we will give you this one also for the service which you will serve with me still another seven years. Then Jacob did so and fulfilled our way. So he gave him his daughter Rachel as wife also. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is taken from gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 52. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Another parable he spoke to them. The kingdom of heaven is like living, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all living. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a, like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to shore, and they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So, it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, 
and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to them, Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he said to them, Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out his treasure things, new and old. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to Jesus. Uh, at this time, we want to go into the word of God. And uh, the theme that we are looking at today is choice making in marriage and God's guidance. Join me in prayer. A blessed and mighty Lord, the entry into your word gives life. Yes. We ask, O oh Lord, that you impart your life to us. Amen. To be obedient to your word. To follow the path that you have set before us. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will give to everyone according to his or her need. That, Lord, everyone will have every cause to give you glory in all our endeavor in life. Amen. Thank you for hearing us, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. It. Amen. Amen. Uh, in the gospel we read today, Jesus spoke at length about the kingdom of heaven. You will see that not less than six parables were given. And he was pointing to the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven. And he was making this known to the disciples so that they will prepare themselves for the kingdom of heaven. So that they will not miss heaven. Because every step we take here on earth, we have to make everything according to God's will so that we will be candidates for heaven. We will be rapturable. We will be able to get to, into the kingdom of God. So after Jesus has spoken to them at length about the kingdom of heaven in parables, then in verse 51, Jesus said to them, have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes, Lord. And may it be our answer in the name of Jesus. Amen. May yes be your answer in the name of Jesus. Amen. That we have understood and we are following exactly what you have described in your word. Amen. So we need to understand that every step we take in life has a great influence on our eternal destination. That's why we are deliberating on choice making in marriage and God's guidance. You know, God guides us in various things, in all things, but we need to know God's guidance. And today we are focusing on marriage. The issue of choice making in marriage, many will think, is for only a set of people who are going to marry. But I want to say it's not. Well, you will say, why, why teach it to everybody? It's for those who are going to marry. I have married already, or I'm not going to marry, or this, or that. Why talk about it? Well, this is a, a, a very important message for everybody, and that you are going to gain from it. That is why it is in the word of God. God has put this in the Bible so that everyone will know. And when you are making steps, you will not derail. For you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. For those who have married already, whether you knew before marrying or not, this message will help maintain or correct your life respectively. So your life will be corrected and you will be following the right. For those who have children that will eventually marry, this is relevant to you and will help you to pray for them and counsel with them so that they will have at the right time, get the right person. 
For those who are at the point of choice making, you are fully ready. You are, you are looking here and there, you want to know who is my life partner? Who will be good for me? Who will be the best for me, the best husband, the best wife for me? This is very appropriate and timely for you so that you will not make a costly mistake that will affect you adversely here on earth and the rest of your life. So this is where you need to really learn and know what is the will of God for me. Our only textbook for teaching is the Holy Bible. Let everyone take heed not to turn to the right or to the left as we discover God's will for our marriage and family life. Don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left. Focus on what God says. There are many worlds out there there are many people saying this, saying that, but compare what they are doing with what is uh, being given by the word of God. And you will see that all those things are different. And that is why we are having many divorce uh, uh, cases in, in life today. Many who have married, they will not take it long and they have divorced. That's why we are having many broken homes today. That's why we are having many vagabond children today. That's why we are having a stable nation today because it all starts from home. The Bible is not silent on how and who are Christians, uh, who are Christian, and who are to be married, who are to be united together. It is necessary to be guided by God in such an important issue of life as marriage. Marriage is very important. Whether you believe it or not, whether you are into it or not, it's very important. Do not think that every step taken by every person in the Bible is the right step. People have made mistakes. They have made mistakes in the Bible too. And one thing that convinces me about the authenticity of the Bible is that it doesn't cover up people's faults, people's mistakes. When you make a mistake, the Bible will point it out. When David did wrong with Uriah's wife, he was not covered. The sin was not packed under the rug and said, don't let everybody know about it, just keep it secret. No, God exposed it. So when people did wrong, God made it known so that it will not be that ah, the Bible has said it, oh, this has happened in the Bible, let's follow it. It's not everything. God made all those known so that people will correct their ways. And God will tell you, this is wrong, this is right. We need to have our trust in the Lord. We need to trust God. I want to sign this one, I mean, give you a, this, this uh, 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 what do I call it? This warning again. You, I'm sounding the warning to you that we must be ready to trust God. It is lack of trust that makes us to, you know, do things that are contrary to the will of God. People think that when we ask God something, immediately it must be done. Your time is not God's time. God has his time. So when you are in a hurry, you pray and you say, oh, God doesn't answer me. God is not answering prayer. God answers prayers. It's you that is too much in a haste. You need to patiently listen to God. You have to listen to God. You have to be ready to take the, the God's time. Let God work it out for you. So we need to trust God. Let me read Proverbs chapter 3 for you. Proverbs chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. 
Don't depend on your understanding. Trust in the Lord. With the Lord is the way. With the Lord is the truth. With the Lord is solutions to your problems. And in verse 6 it says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Acknowledge God. People don't acknowledge God these days. They can acknowledge human beings. They can acknowledge, uh, you know, science. They can acknowledge all other areas of, uh, of life. And they will say, well, it happened this way. Somebody had done this way. And uh, somebody has done that way. But we fail to acknowledge God. And that is why there are mistakes. Verse 7 tells us, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That word fear is reverential fear. It's reverential fear that is acknowledge God. Let God do it for you. Don't be wise in your own eyes and say, I know it, I know how to do it. Peter did it and he failed. He was confident that he will not deny Christ. But when the time came, he was proved wrong. So you have to depend on God, not on your own understanding. And let me read to you again Proverbs chapter 14. In Proverbs chapter 14, looking at it from verse 12, I read it through 16. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Have you been thinking of the way you are going? Have you been thinking of what you will do, what is next, and that is what is next, and you have been planning for yourself, and you are thinking that you can carry it out in situ, without any obliteration. Everything will come out as I've done it, as I've planned it. Have you been thinking that way? He says there is a way which seems right unto a man. You will think it's all right. Everything is okay. I don't need any help. I can do it myself. But the end thereof are the ways of death. The ways of death. And in verse 13 it says, Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mouth is heaviness. That is, people will be laughing, but inside of them, they are sorrowful. You will think they are getting it right. You will think they are doing it right, but they are just laughing. They are putting out their teeth, but inside them, they are sorrowful because they, are no, they know that things are not working. Things are not working as you feel that, oh, they are smiling, oh, they are laughing, oh, they are this. They are just camouflaging, showing what is not in their heart, they are sorrowful. And the end of that mouth is heaviness. So they become heavy when they get to their selves. When they get to themselves and they get aloof. And you will see them heavy in heart. Because they have never achieved what they thought they would achieve. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. And a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Oh, I am a good man. I know. I will be able to do it. I know. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry about it. It's going to come out right. The simple believeth every word. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. You know, there are some people who don't search the scripture. They just listen to the, you know, those who are just proclaiming the gospel all about. And some have mixed with these people. They might say things that are not according to the scripture. But you will just gullibly take it. And you will say, oh, uh, prophet so-so-so has said this. Oh, 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 pastor so-so-so has said this. Have you gone to the scripture to find out? And that is why I take it on myself to look into the mirror, the word of God, the scripture, for us to read it together. And I'm showing you this so that you will know that this is coming from the Bible. The simple believes every word, but the prudent man looks where to his going. 
Is it according to the pattern of the Bible? As the Bible said this, is this in accordance to the word of God? Search the scripture like the people of Berea. And in verse 16, a wise man fears and departs from evil, but the fool rages and is confident. He rages and he says, I don't want anybody to correct me. I don't want anybody to take anything to me. I want you to know that we must follow the will of God as people of wisdom, people who are taught, who are knowledgeable. In our second lesson today, Laban supplanted Jacob over marriage by giving him Leah instead of Rachel. You know, Jacob did all things so that he would get Rachel. But Laban did not follow it. He supplanted him. As the name Jacob is himself, he also was a supplanter. And now he is being supplanted. And you know, through this, polygamy also set in. Polygamy set in. In Genesis chapter 29, the passage we read, I'm reading from verse 15. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what should you, 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 your wages be? You see, serving for nothing, you are laboring, you have been working. You know, that is the plot. I want to catch him, I want, to, I want him to work, to labor more for me. Now, Laban had, had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were delicate, but Rachel was beautiful of form and appearance. Now let me explain this to you. You know, God has made us delicately and beautifully. He made us delicately and beautifully. I want you to know that Leah's eyes were delicate. That is, she was of a wonderful outlook. The face was so wonderful, ready to do the will of God, ready to obey the word of God. So she was made uh, of a delicate outlook. But Rachel was beautiful of form and appearance. That is the composition of, uh, of Rachel. She has a good compartment of the body. Slim, very tender, and you know when she walks, you will see her missing here, missing there, you know, of a great appearance. So you will see that both of them were very good. But because of the tenderness and the beautiful appearance in form and appearance of Rachel, Jacob preferred Rachel. And in verse 18, now Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. You know, it's now a matter of selling the daughter. You know, many families have the culture of selling their daughters. Selling. So this is a selling attitude that is contrary to the will of God. Don't sell your daughter. You just sell out your daughter. Don't sell your daughter. And in verse 19, And Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me. You know, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. So you will see that incest that is forbidden is trying to come in now. Because Laban is uh, of the same family with Jacob. You know, Jacob 
is very close. They are relatives. But now he is saying, I would rather give my daughter to you. So serve me, serve me well, serve me well, so that I may give her to you. You know, incest forbidden. Marriage between close relatives forbidden. And in verse 20, so Jacob served sev seven years for Rachel. You know, he served very assiduously with the intent that I'm going to get married with the lover of my heart. And they seemed only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. And in verse 21, then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go into her. You know, seven years, just like uh, a few days. So, and Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. You know, I'm going to sell my daughter. So I want to make a feast. I want you to come and rejoice with me. I'm sending out my daughter. Now it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. And Laban gave his maid, Zilpah, to his daughter, Leah, as a maid. So it came to pass in the morning that, behold, it was Leah, not Rachel. And he said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? You know, that's the result of carnal plan. Carnal plan. Beauty motivated plan. And so, he has been supplanted. And you can imagine, when you are giving when is, you are depending on your, your father, your mom, mother, to give you to a man of their choice. It is not the right thing. The, the woman has to see somebody, like uh, you know that of Rebecca, you know what that of, uh, of Isaac, that when God will choose for Isaac, he was given, and uh, you know, the, the, the parents, the people said, are you going with this man? And she said, I will go. So it's not to say whether you like it or not, this is the man you are going to marry. There are people like that who force their daughters to a man. And this is not the plan of God. If if uh, Jacob had known, if he had, he had been going along with this, he would have known the, the woman that was brought to, to him. But he is following blindly. Well, however dark it will be, will you be so timid as to make a dialogue with the, the wife that is coming into you and you will know that this is different so he just went in, ignorantly, taking for granted that Rachel has come. Ah, Rachel has come. It's not Rachel, it's Leah. Many people have been given Leah today instead of their Rachel. And in verse 26, and Laban said, It must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Didn't he know that before? Before he was negotiating. Didn't he know? And in verse 27, he says, Fulfill her week, and we will give you this one also for the service which you will serve with me still another seven years. <laughs> for, for 14 years, Jacob served for marriage. He served, he was working hard. In the vineyard of Laban. And you know, that led him to polygamy. That was the step to polygamy. Because the first he got was not his choice. The first he got was contrary to his will. The first he got was not his own making. It was not God-led. 
he, not, he, he did not get anything good. He was thinking that I just must get the one that I want. And so he didn't mind to serve for another seven years. And God does not love polygamy. Then Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. So he gave him his daughter Rachel as, as wife also. So they became two. Sister, the, 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 the two siblings, siblings, sister and sister. God's choice is different from human's choice. When God sent prophet, the, the prophet Samuel, to anoint one of Jesse's uh, uh, sons as king, he would have made a mistake. He would have, he would have taken a wrong, a wrong man. But let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 16. I'm reading it from verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 6. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the our heart. So God looks into the inward. Man looks into the appearance. Jacob looked into appearance. God looked into the inward part. Do you know a eunuch? When you want to marry and you don't want to ask God to lead you, to direct you, do you know a eunuch? And it is, um, it is when you get there, you will know, oh, this is a eunuch, and you begin to seek for divorce. Let God plan it for you. You will see it differently. Hallelujah. You will see it differently. And when you look at verse 8, then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, and he said, Neither had the Lord chosen these. And again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. You know, this one is good, that one is good, and these are taking them according to his uh, own heart. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord had not chosen these. The whole seven. Not knowing there was one that was very small. And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was rude, Rudy and wither of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look at. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. The one you never expected. The one you, you, you will not even think about. The best of the best that God has for you is hidden somewhere. He is not, he is not made to come out for you to see yet. He is, he is somewhere waiting for you as the partner, but God will reveal to you when you make God your own leader that will lead you to the right place. And in Psalm 37, Psalm 37, I'm reading verse 4. Reading from verse 4, Delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desire of your heart. Amen. The Lord will give you the desire of your heart. Now listen to me. When God is saying, delight yourself in the Lord. When you delight yourself in the Lord, your desire will be the desire according to the will of God. So he says, then he will give you the desire of your heart. 
So the desires of your heart when you are far away from God is different from the desire that God will give you. When you delight yourself also in the Lord, He shall give you the desires of your heart. That is when your, your delight is in the Lord. The Lord will panel your heart according to to his will. He will channelize your way according to his will and you will be able to find the true lover of your soul. And then verse 5, commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He will bring it to pass to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. He will bring it to pass to your child in the name of Jesus. Amen. He will bring it to pass to your lover in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in verse 6, And he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your judgment as the noon day. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Amen. Fret not thyself because of him, who prospereth in his way. Did you know how he made it? Because of that man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Did you know whom he is following? The devil can give you something today and tomorrow he will make you to become miserable. You see that lady with that man and you say, oh, that's a beautiful lady that this man has gotten. And see me, I've been praying and praying, nothing has come yet. Look at them. In three months, they will be finding faults against one another. In a short time, you will be seen, ah, so, 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 so has this divorced. You will not know the reason. But God is giving you something that is permanent. Amen. Something that is loving. Something that is loving. You know, I read a book sometime. And the book, uh, you know, in it I saw something that, uh, you know, they married the ones they loved. We love the ones, the ones that we marry. Yeah. That is, they marry the, the lady that they, 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 they want, that they love. But I marry the wife that God has given me. Yeah. I marry the wife that God has given to me. Yeah. And behold, I see, I see my wife to be the most beautiful on earth. The most wonderful uh, woman. That is it. When you hand over everything to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when we look at uh, Psalm 37 verse 23. It says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good man. A good man who surrenders to God. Who trusts in God. Who hands over everything unto God? The steps of such a man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. The steps of such a man are led by God. Amen. And he delights in his ways. Amen. And when you look at Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. Oh Lord, I know that the way of Man is not in himself. It is not in a man that walketh to direct his steps. It's not in your hand. You don't know tomorrow. You don't know who is that woman. You don't know who is that man. You don't know. God knows. He knows everything. There are some whom you are thinking you will marry. And when you force yourself to marry, you don't know whether that person will die the next month. And then you begin to become a young widow or widower. It is not in a man that walketh to direct his steps. You want to order your steps by yourself? You will make mistakes. You want to order your steps by your own self, by your own volition? You will build your house without God and it will collapse. You will fumble. You will fumble. But there are conditions we must fulfill 
before God can, you know, guide us. Before God will lead us into our haven of rest. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6. I'm reading Matthew chapter 6 from verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? So take no thought, that is, be careful for nothing. But by prayer and supplication, let everything be handed over unto God. In verse 26, it says, Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bands. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? No, you can't. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I said to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. God will array you. Amen. God will beautify you. Amen. God will give you the best for your life. In verse 30, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which, is, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall I wear? What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. So God has a plan for you, and God will help you through. But brother, this will not be enough. <coughs> Next week, we shall give more attention to the teaching of God's word on how not to and how to choose, how to find a helpmeet. God is going to lead us, and as we continue with this, we will, you know, continue next week, and we will go deeper into what we are discussing. But let me tell you, you need to seek the face of God. You need to put your trust in God. In whatever decision you are trying to make, let God lead you, and he will direct you. So we are going to sing the hymn of response, What a Friend <coughs> We Have in Jesus. Jesus who is able to lead us. Jesus is who is able to give us the right thing. Who is able to lead us to the right partner for our lives. Who is going to lead us to get the best for our lives. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. <laughs>
the time of invitation to Christian discipleship and prayer. So this moment I want you to pray to the Lord. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to do so now because He is the one who will lead you to succeed in life. He is the one that will lead you that will not be drowned in the ocean of life. He is the one that will lead you that you will not regret at the end of your journey on earth. And so, accept him as your Lord and Savior, confess your sin. He says, though your sins be as colored, they shall be as wool. He can make you clean if you trust in him and you, you rest in his provision for you. He has died for you, he has shed his blood so that you will be washed and made clean by the blood that is shed on the cross of Calvary. So accept him, ask, to, ask him to forgive you your sins. Ask him that Jesus forgive me my sins. Whatever you have done, if sincerely you come before him, penitently you ask for forgiveness. He says, the Bible says he is, he is faithful and true to forgive all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So he will forgive you. I'm persuaded that he will forgive you because he will not act against his word. If you truly come before him, he will forgive you. He will make you to be clean. And you will become new, a new creature, a new creation. And at this time, call on the Lord. Forgive me, cleanse me, wash me. And the next step for you is to say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Save me now. Save me. Deliver me. And I'm persuaded it will deliver you not only from sin. It will deliver you from the power of darkness. It will deliver you from the power of Satan. It will deliver you from all the evil spirits that must have been destroying or disturbing your life. So pray to him at this time, Lord, forgive me, cleanse me. And Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. From now on onward, Lord, help me to be close with you, to continue with you. I believe in my heart, as your word has said, that if I confess and I come before you, you will forgive me and you will save me. I believe I'm saved. I believe by the confession of my, my mouth and by the belief in my heart, I know that I am saved. I'm a child of God. I am a Christian. So with your faith in the Lord, you see a wonderful things, that wonderful things have happened in your life. And now, have that faith in the Lord and continue with Him. Continue to fellowship with believers with children of God. When COVID-19 is all off, you can find a beautiful church, a church that is really in the Word of God, studying the wonderful Word of God, following the truth, and fellowship with them. And if you are nearer us, you can come in, come in with us. The Lord will do you good. And uh, for those who are looking for life partner, we are looking for a wife looking for a husband who wants to have the, the, the love of their heart. The Lord has the bone of your bones that he wants to give you. The Lord has the bone of your bones. And so as you pray, talk to the Lord that the Lord will lead you and help you. That the Lord will help you to have trust in him. To trust the Lord. And as he has said, Trust in me, and I will bring it to pass. So begin to trust the Lord for the good thing that is coming. And never look here and there, but focus on the word of God. Focus on God and be attentive to the spirit, the, in, 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 the, the infilling of the spirit, what the spirit of God will be directing you as you pray, and continue to make this step according to what God is giving you. So at this time, Sister Grace is going to round off the prayer. 
and then we will sing the final hymn. Almighty God, once again we thank you. You are a great planner. Thank you for your plan for the earth. You created it for a purpose. You made male and female in your image so that they will come together. They will reproduce. And the earth will be filled with the blessings of God. That the glory of God will fill every place. Our Lord and our God, the world is in trouble today because of pollution that entered into the lives of people. Our Lord and our God, and it degenerated that even now some young adults they refuse to marry for flimsy excuses. Lord, we pray today that to liberate the world. Father, liberate the world. Rebuild the world. Forgive our sins. As females, as males in the world, forgive our sins. And let there be light that we open our eyes to receive your pure word. Take the right step that, Father, young adults, male and female, will rise up and fulfill the will of God for them. We remove our fears. We remove our confusion. We remove our pollution. In the name of Jesus. And from this time on, we pray that the anointing for rebuild, anointing for rebuild, that male and female will understand the mind of God and rise up to build the earth, to bring joy, to bring liberation. To bring good governance in families in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing pour on the nations in the world. Let your anointing pour on each family in the world. Forgive sins and deliver in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are going to sing the closing hymn. Number 133, leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. We are leaning on the everlasting arms of the Lord. <laughs>
so let's share the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord continue to uplift you and continue to uphold you. May the Lord continue to direct your steps that you will never make a mistake. But the Lord will give you the, the blessing that he has for you. And as you go, go in peace. And the peace of the Lord is going with you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So I want to welcome all of you. I want to thank God for you, for you. God bless you. God continue to breathe his breath upon you. So uh, you are wonderful people indeed in Jesus' name. So have a nice day.